Okay, so welcome back, folks. We're at lesson nine, lenses. It seems no one got my memo from earlier today that office hours will be moved up 30 minutes to accommodate a meeting that I have. So you'll all be watching this video, I'm sure, to learn about lenses. Uh, if you have questions about the lesson, please post them into the document afterwards, and one of the grade 10 teachers will be happy to answer you. So we've learned about reflecting surfaces as well as medium that change the speed of light. And it's all in an attempt to unify our understanding and our learning about how light works when moving from air into other mediums. Also, we can study how lenses work. So lenses are found in a few different things. More importantly, they are used for magnifying glasses, glasses, cameras, eyes, contact lenses, projectors, all sorts of different things that allow for us to zoom in and zoom out. So a lens is a curved, transparent material that is smooth and regular shaped so that it will reflect light in a predictable and therefore useful way. And that's kind of the most important component that we have to take into consideration. So there are two types of lenses that we learn about in this class. The first is a converging. The second is a diverging. So depending on how they are polished and the final shape of that lens, lenses can make rays converge or move towards a specific point or diverge and move or move away from a specific point. So we're going to look at some terminology. You'll notice a lot of similarities from when we learned about reflective surfaces. The first being the principal axis, the axis of symmetry, and the, op the principal focus. So when we look at the principal axis, it's an imaginary line drawn through the optical center. The axis of symmetry is an image imaginary vertical line drawn through the optical center of the lens, just like with our... Uh, with our reflective mirrors, it's a little bit different in terms of the axis of symmetry, and we'll find out why as we move through this lesson. But it divides the lens in half. The optical center is the center point at which the principal axis meets the axis of symmetry. And then the principal focus is the point where the emergent rays, so i.e. the rays that go through the lens, and they meet from the incident rays which were parallel to the principal axis. So in a converging lens, we'll look at this in more detail, in a converging lens, all of the incident rays that travel parallel to the principal axis, once they hit, oops, once they hit the lens, in a converging lens, right, once they hit the, the, the lens, they refract, they refract, and they all converge on the principal axis. So that's where the converging lens gets its name. It converges all perpendicular incident rays to the center principal focus of the lens. Likewise, with diverging lenses, with diverging lenses, when we look at those incident rays traveling parallel to the principal axis, Okay, the rays will diverge away, they will diverge away, and they will not converge or meet anywhere specifically. However, if you look at those imaginary rays, those dotted lines, and I'll highlight that in a different color, you take note that they all still converge on the principal focus. So the principal focus still does in some way, shape, or form play a role in diverging lenses. You just have to remember about those virtual or non-reflected uh, or refracted rays. So F and F prime are equal distances on either side of the lens. That's like a very important little detail. Right? It gets a spider because it's very important. All right. They're equal distances on either side of the lens. Please remember this. So what are diverging lenses used for? Why are they important? Well, as light that is parallel to that principal axis travels, right? They pass through that diverging or concave lens. They are refracted away from the principal axis. This means that light rays diverge and they will never meet on the other side of the lens. Glasses, telescope, peepholes, binoculars, they make an image smaller and they increase the, the view range by allowing these diverging rays uh, to serve their purpose, so to speak. Converging lens, likewise, they allow things to converge on that F, 
right? Towards and through F. This means that light rays move towards each other. If they're traveling, uh, if the incident ray is traveling parallel to the principal axis, once it hits the lens, they will converge and refract and onto that focal point or that F. And some examples of useful converging lenses are magnifying glasses, glasses, microscopes, and refracting telescopes. So please read through these notes and fill them in. This is all we're gonna cover for today in this lesson. Uh, you can then go on to do the uh, Explore Learning, the ray tracing lessons gizmo that I've added to our uh, Explore Learning classroom. Fill in that chart, as well as the chart and example questions on the next page. I won't show those yet. I want you to, to try them before I give you the answers or I take them up with you so we can do that in tomorrow's class. Okay, uh, sorry about the change in scheduling, folks. If you have questions, I'm still going to be here until 1 o'clock-ish, so hopefully people are, are on. And, um, yeah, post your other questions in the document if you got them. Take care.